In this lesson, we're going to explore interpolated geometry, and in particular, splines, boundary surfaces, and sweep. Let's start a brand new part in SolidWorks using your Infinite Skills template file. Let's just open a brand new sketch on any plane and make that normal to the view with Control 8 if it doesn't do it automatically. Click on the Spline tool from your Sketch toolbar and just start clicking some points. Notice that after you click the second point, SolidWorks starts bending the spline. And as you add more points, you can create just about any shape you want to with the spline. SolidWorks is interpolating the shape between the points that you apply, and it allows you to control that shape in several ways. The first way is obviously to move the control points or the endpoints of the spline. You can also move the entire spline if you just click on it and move it to a new location. Of course, to do this, you have to not have external relationships. For example, if this point were coincident with the origin, and I tried to move the rest of the spline, the spline would deform slightly as I move it around. Another way to control the shape of a spline is to use relationships on the ends or these handles. You can create reference geometry or additional geometry and make relations such as tangent or curvature continuous between these sketch elements. And then the spline shape will be driven by that relationship. Spline handles can also be used internally, and remember there are several controls here. The diamond shape allows you to control the direction of the tangency at that point. The dot on the end allows you to control the strength of the tangency, or the weighting of the tangency at that point. These handles can also be given relationships. So if you select the handle, you can tell it to be a vertical handle. That would be the same as creating a vertical line and making a tangent relationship between the vertical line and the spline. A third way to control the shape of a spline would be to right click on it, right click on the spline and select display control polygon. The control polygon allows you to control the spline using points that are not directly on the spline. Some programs use this type of editing exclusively, and many designers prefer this method because they think they get a smoother spline. But however you choose to control the spline, there are a few things that you need to remember about shapes with splines. One is that you can't make a spline that crosses itself. SolidWorks is just not going to allow it. If you create the spline and then try to make it cross itself again, you're just not going to be able to do it. You can make a closed loop spline, and you can make splines that have symmetric elements. If I create a spline like this and then make a symmetric relationship with a center line, now your spline is going to be symmetric. There are other tools that you can use along with your spline, such as adding curvature control, and this allows you to control the curvature at any one particular point. The property manager for the curvature control allows you to actually control the radius of curvature in the current units. So if I were to change this to a larger radius, you'd see it would flatten out slightly. And if I were to make this a smaller radius, you'd see I'd get a little lump. A diagnostic tool that you can use to help you analyze your splines is the curvature comb. And if I move this up higher, we can see this in the menu. The show curvature comb option shows us that there is a little lump in the curvature at this point where we applied the curvature control. If we remove the curvature control and remove this point, the curvature comb should remain symmetrical and very smooth. When we make the transition from 2D to 3D interpolated geometry, we can get results as shown here. Open up the interpolated shape model from your Chapter 3 Working Files folder. 
We're starting from a simple block and a cylinder, but what we want to do is interpolate the shape between these. So SolidWorks is going to gradually transition from a four-sided shape to a circular shape. And we can do this with one of two features, the loft feature or the boundary feature. The boundary feature is the one I would probably prefer to use. So let's just click on this face and then click on this face. And notice how SolidWorks is interpolating. We can see the shape gradually changing in these cross sections. It starts out rectangular. The rectangle starts to bulge on the sides. The rectangle becomes closer and closer to a circle, and then eventually, on this end, the rectangle becomes a circle. You can turn off the curvature combs if you just want to visualize the shape itself without any of the aids. Notice that SolidWorks is interpolating in a straight line by default. This is when you use a loft or boundary surface that has no end conditions. But if we introduce end conditions, such as normal to profile, notice now that the loft is coming off of the cylinder tangent to the faces on the outside of the cylinder. If you tug on the arrow, then this is like weighting the tangency, and you can create a situation where the feature will fail. This number corresponds to a number in the property manager. And that's this one right here. So you can key in the numbers. These go from 0 to 10. And you'll see that some numbers simply aren't appropriate for the type of feature or the type of geometry that you may have. If you have a value of 1, that's the default. If you have a value of less than 1, then the effect of the tangency will be less pronounced. Let's set the tangency on the other end of the loft or the boundary surface. So I'll select the other selection, which is the rectangle, and say that this one should also be normal to profile. This gives us an S-shaped transition. And if we bump up the influence of both of these, we can limit most of the transition to a center section or we can relax the transition so it happens more smoothly over a larger section of the transition. Notice also that you can take advantage of using the connectors in loft and boundary surfaces. This dot allows us to actually twist the feature as it's created, and we can add additional connectors. So we can say add a connector here, then we could twist it more, or we could just make this top section very narrow compared to the rest of it. We can add some more connectors and distort the shape even more. Just be aware that there's probably a breaking point for how much you can distort the shape using connectors. And remember also that these connectors cannot be necessarily dimensioned. So you may not get perfectly symmetrical results. The connectors will snap to endpoints, but on circles, they won't snap to quadrant points. If you add sketch points before using the connectors, connectors will snap to sketch points. Let's take a look at another type of interpolated geometry. In this case, we'll look at the sweep with guide curves. Let's actually edit sketch 3, and we'll make this a solid by adding a straight line in here. Otherwise, we can only make a surface from this. And so now let's use the sweep to sweep this profile down the straight line as a path. Sweeping along a straight line is the equivalent of extruding. But when we add a guide curve, we can see that the result changes. Also, using the eyeglasses tool, the show sections, allows us to see how SolidWorks is interpolating this geometry. So it is creating individual intermediate cross sections and interpolating the rest of the shape between those cross sections.